Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I am Rudy, your host for today's webinar. Thank you for standing by and welcome to ISRI India webinar on spatial data science using ArcGIS notebooks. In today's webinar, we will learn about end-to-end -end spatial data science workflows using ArcGIS and Jupyter, the most popular Python notebook interface. The speakers for today's webinar are Mr. Shanmuga Raja and Mr. Gaurav Kumar. Shanmuga is a technical architect, professional service at ISRI India. He has extensive experience in system architecting and design, performance engineering, and enterprise GIS implementation service. He holds multiple ISRI certification, including Enterprise System Design Associate and Enterprise Geodata Management Professional. Gaurav is a project manager, a professional service at ISRI India. He has more than 13 years of experience in project development, solution architecting, project management, data science and automation in the area of defense, utilities, commercial and aviation sector. He is also certified as an ArcGIS Enterprise Administration Associate. For the duration of presentation, all participants' line will be in listen-only mode. We also have a panel of ISRI India experts on call to answer any queries you may leave. We will have a Q&A session post the presentation. Meanwhile, if you have any questions, you may also send them across to all panelists using the chat window on the right-hand side of your console. In view of COVID-19 lockdown, our teams are hosting this webinar from their home environments. We have planned this event to ensure minimal disruptions to the service during the event for your seamless experience. In case we face an unexpected disruption, please be patient. We would take necessary steps to restore the service immediately. So now, without further delay, I would like to hand over the proceedings to Mr. Shanmuga and Mr. Gaurav from ISRI India. Sir, welcome to the program. You are now ready to begin. Yeah, thank you, Rudy. And uh, thank you very much, everyone, for joining this session today in spite of this pandemic situation. Once again, warm welcome from Shanmuga, Gaurav, and ISRI India Technologies. So basically, we categorize this webinar into four segments. The first two, which talks about the quick overview about the basics of data science and ArcGIS to make sure that everyone is on the same page since our participants are from various backgrounds. So followed by, let us see how we can utilize this disruptive technology of the decade, that is some of the data science techniques in location intelligence space to extract some of the insights from raw data which can actually uh, you know, help me in making data-driven decisions. Also, we'll talk about different ways in which you can use AI within a spatial analytics platform. And finally, uh, you know, we'll show some of a uh, couple of demos you know, during the course of uh, you know, our presentation. So we'll begin with overview of what is spatial data science and terms like artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning and see how they are related. So what exactly the spatial data science is? I simply break this field into data science and spatial analytics disciplines. So typically, there is no standard definition associated. And the definition, obviously, varies depending upon the team, what you're working, and the background of the scientist who actually works on the analytics framework. So they can have their own definition. And most of you all knew about data science is an interdisciplinary field which allows you to extract insights and to discover hidden patterns from the raw data using various scientific methods, practices, algorithms, and processes. And when you talk about this AI, there is a lot of terminologies and buzzwords like CNTK, AI, computer vision, and so many, et cetera. And it's easy to get for us to last in this. So uh, to consolidate this, we'd like to pass it into three important concepts. So generally, uh, data scientists, they rely heavily on artificial intelligence, especially its uh, subfields of, you know, like uh, machine learning and uh, deep learning 
to create a models and predictions using algorithms and other techniques so as a broad term for artificial intelligence i can simply term it as human intelligence that is exhibited by machines and actually the scope of ai is disputed and constantly is changing over uh, course of a time and it's evolving day by day so things like you know uh, like understanding the speech or uh, recognizing the images are some of the examples and next when we talk about this machine learning it just refers to data driven algorithms and techniques which actually uh, you know automate uh, predictions uh, classification clustering of data and what the systems that can learn from their experience to find patterns in a set of data so the best example i would say like you know uh, locking and unlocking of your uh, smartphones using your thumb impression so that's the best example i can quote for machine learning and finally uh, deep learning is a subset technique of you know uh, implementing machine learning i can say deep learning it just mimics the human brain and learns the patterns out of patterns and repeatedly it just learns by its own you know uh, using the deep neural networks okay now uh, you may be wondering all this great about the data science but where does rgs fits in and where does uh, special analytics comes in ladies and gentlemen now uh, take a look at this example you know uh, on the tip, uh, on the uh, top left window it just shows the traffic signals you know and the traffic camera that is sending the live video feed as you can see the vehicles are moving in and out and on the bottom left the live feeds are interpreted using a deep learning framework which actually detects the vehicle types whether it is a car bus or a motorcycle so on the right side the window which you are seeing is the agis operations dashboard which is a part of agis enterprise and azul and those, those predicted results are passed into the system of record that is into agis platform which shows the live statistics about the vehicle types and its counts and the same is plotted on the map as well along with overlaid with the traffic signals and strength so this is the my favorite example to quote about how the you know the intersection of data science and agis which can happen together okay now all these activities are happening through you know what is the medium that's nothing but it is the orchestration of agis api for python so yes this uh, python is the bright medium of communication between uh, uh, you know two different worlds agis platform and data science libraries and uh, external framework like uh, you know tensorflow pytorch or ibm watson so that can be brought it you know inside or integrate with agis and uh, i say that uh, those who are new to agis yes let us get on them board with the quick understanding of what agis is just to you know uh, frame better we might describe agis as a you know whole and comprehensive geospatial platform is just open and interoperable and you can say that it provides a, a full range of gis capabilities such as services to individuals ranging from individual work groups teams and for the entire organization as well as the uh, citizen community engagement as well and that's why it's just standing out as a, a global market leader in gis geospatial community and so agis generally what does it do it just improvises the organization's business process and revenue and by bringing the together all the aspects of data you know ranging from uh, uh, information product uh, data people maps apps and results in enhanced the communication way within and across the organization so i'm just you know a uh, uh, little uh, drilling down the data aspect yes agis organizes and supports for various types of uh, you know uh, data models like ranging from vector raster imagery lidar iot 3d big data and etc and finally just abstract those in data into a, i say like it is a common language of uh, you know maps and scenes and layers so that all uh, everybody can you know understand it pretty much easily and it helps for the quick decision making so that's what it makes agis as a universal technology under the umbrella of uh, you know uh, agis enterprise as a collaborative with gis platform for organizational workflows so now uh, you may be curious about there are so many components servers products and all those which is in under the you know the esri ecosystem but you may be curious about which particular agis component that can actually can support for you know the special data science workflows 
So that's where the today's hero comes in, RGS notebooks. Actually, RGS provides the special analytical capabilities to premier analytical engines like RGS API for Python and RPI tools. Most of you have used it. I mean, uh, those who are utilizing the RGS platform. And if you are talk about the other analytical tools like uh, you know uh, geo processing tools, uh, which are packaged in an RGS desktops and servers, and uh, most important and uh, WebGIS analytical tools like standard analysis tools, which is present in you know RGS Enterprise and the AGL platform, and third, Geo Analytic Server and Raster Analytic Server, which has its own server functions federated with RGS Enterprise. So like you can you know why these uh, technologies uh, can be you know coupled together because they are interoperable to each other. And in the right side, if you see uh, the rich set of open source Python libraries, including uh, TensorFlow. Uh, PyTorch, Keras, they are into deep learning segment. So exactly where this RGS notebook sits, it just sits at the intersection you know, between the two different worlds, data science and RGS platform. So RGS has been built on top of this most popular you know, open source uh, technologies like Python and Jupyter notebooks. So why Python? So Python is just one of the most popular scripting languages for automation in uh, many disciplines. And uh, Jupyter Notebook, you know, which is the open source and uh, browser-based interactive environment, which is designed to support scientific and data science computations. And most probably the strength of RGS Notebooks lies in like it embraces the, these uh, open source technologies by its, you know, backend uh, design itself. So RGS Notebooks, which can assist in many use cases like WebGIS content administration, then uh, you know uh, data science workflows and uh, GIS content management. And now you have a question like, uh, how I can you know use uh, Python and notebooks together? So as of now, you know we have a uh, uh, three ways uh, that you can utilize this uh, uh, Python notebook. So first, with respect to RGS Pro, that is not our next generation RGS desktop product. It is by default, it uh, ships with RPI and RGS API for Python and uh, Jupyter Notebooks within this RGS Pro itself. It's like the moment you install your software, you want to get this, uh, you know, the modules uh, along with you. And second, as a standalone Jupyter Notebook, as one can use its, uh, you know, capability without RGS Pro, just by importing uh, RGS API for Python libraries into their own Python environment. So uh, here the users will be like the hardcore, you know, the data scientists. They'll be using this uh, model, second model. And third, uh, which is nothing but it's RGS Notebook Server, which is an extension to RGS Enterprise. So typically, uh, it is just to support uh, for an organizational level data science workflows where multiple people are engaged, and thereby you can bring in all your RPI tools as well as API for Python with integrated WebGIS experience. So the first two, which is like, uh, you know, uh, single user manager, I mean, the user has to manage uh, all these items, whether it's the libraries or uh, your notebooks or data and everything. But when it comes to the RGS notebooks, that's the unique capability within RGS Enterprise, uh, which is having an integrated experience uh, within WebGIS. What does it do? It uses the Docker container at behind the scene to manage the user libraries and uh, resources. So that's why we call it as an hosted notebook. So, and now uh, we are going to have a, a quick demo on how the, how green the Delhi is. So I'll uh, hand it over to my colleague, Mr. Gaurav. Uh, Gaurav, can you take it forward? Thank you, Raja. Uh, welcome all. So in this demo, we are trying to showcase we are trying to uh, showcase uh, the green cover of delhi in october 2015 the india state of forest report 2017 shows that the green cover of delhi has increased up to approximately 0.20% from 2015 to 2017, as observed from the satellite imagery for the month of October and November. That's a positive news for Delhi city. So 
Here, we are trying to uh, use the capabilities or spectral indices of uh, normalized difference vegetation index for calculating the green cover of Delhi on 15th of October 2017 using a Landsat imagery. So for doing that, I have opened my notebook on my ArcGIS Pro. I have imported some of the necessary imports like matplotlib, pandas, ArcGIS, ArcGIS.GIS, ArcGIS.raster, ArcGIS.geocoding. So after doing the necessary imports, I uh, connect to my enterprise GIS. For that, I use a GIS function available with the ArcGIS.GIS module. So I supplied three parameters over here. One is the portal URL, the username, and the password. After that, I need to search for the required content. So I search for the same. I supply the name and the type of the data that I require from my um, enterprise GIS. So I provide that imagery layer I required. So I got that image. That's the result. I got it from there. I also require an India state boundary from my uh, enterprise GIS. So again, I go to the search module, uh, search function from this GIS module. I search for India state boundaries. Uh, now the type of layer is feature layer. So I got the state boundary. Now I know. Now I want to know the extent of my uh, for Delhi so that it can be clipped out from, from the Landsat imagery. For that, I use a geocode function from ArcGIS dot uh, uh, geocoding uh, module. So I provide the address and that uh, uh, special reference to it. After doing that, I got the uh, extent of my area. I also take out the state boundary for Delhi from my India state boundary. I got it with that object ID 7. Uh, after that, I patch the extend to my uh, Delhi state boundary. Then I filter the image uh, from my imagery base based on cloud cover and acquisition date. So I put the criteria like cloud cover would be less than 0.5% and the time would be between 1st of October 2017 to 31st of December 2017. And after that, I got this result. So from this result, I choose the data that is, that is acquired on 15th of October 2017. After that, I just see my data that I have selected with a natural color DRA. After that, I apply a NDVI composite on on uh, by using an NDVI raw function, and I apply this uh, with the help of apply function that comes with ArcGIS dot raster dot functions module. So after that, I clip my data with my uh, Delhi boundaries. After that, I do some more. Uh, classification of my data based on NDVI value ranges. So for NDVI values between 0.4 to 0.5 goes to agricultural land and uh, uh, NDVI values between 0.5 to 1 goes to forest cover and tree cover. So I reclassified it with the help of remap function, which is, a, which is available to me. So after that, after reclassification, I put everything onto my map. So here, the green, light green pixel denotes the agricultural land cover, and whereas the dark green uh, pixel uh, denotes the forest cover or tree cover. So after that, I calculate the histogram of the same of my data. After that, I, I, uh, I push everything on a pie chart just to show the green cover, total green cover of uh, Delhi. So it says that uh, around 81% of uh, Delhi uh, is uh, um, non-green, and uh, the green cover part is 
approximately 19% of the uh, graphical total uh, geographical area of Delhi. So in this way, we are able to find up. In this way, we are able to find up the total uh, green cover uh, of Delhi. So uh, we. Uh, so in this way, uh, by using uh, ArcGIS Notebook Server. By using uh, ArcGIS uh, Notebook Server, it can be done uh, for any region. You can calculate the NDVI for uh, Landsat imagery, and uh, with that uh, NDVI parameters, you can calculate the green cover. So everything uh, can be within an ArcGIS Notebook Server. So this is the power of Notebook Server. So hand on to uh, going back to Raja. Thank you all. And uh, thank you, Gaurav, uh, for taking us and uh, you know simple walk through over you know how image processing techniques with respect to spectral indices calculations, you know uh, using uh, RGS notebooks. So and um, you might be you know knowing that like uh, uh, many of us are doing you know day-to-day -day activities like a lot of imagery tasks that our users are working on it. So. Uh, like one example I can give, like, uh, you know, people are working on uh, classification of land cover, like, so what technology I can use it with respect to deep learning. So I can, you know, uh, take out this uh, deep learning based pixel classification model. Then moving on to the next example, it's users want to, you know, find objects of interest in the imagery, such as uh, like a palm trees in this example, we can quote, and we can use object direction models. And uh, you may want to, you know, uh, get the precise polygonal boundaries of each object. Like uh, in our case, it is a building footprint extraction. So here I can use instance segmentation model. So uh, in the, you know, uh, the bottom images, which represents the generic data science technology, and uh, you know, the upper bands, which just represents the, you know, uh, how we can utilize in uh, spatial analytics platform within AGIS. Similarly, like in case you may want to classify, you know, uh, the houses which are damaged or not, and they can use, you know, image classification models within, you know, deep learning framework. So overall, you can say like uh, ArcGIS platform, they have the end-to-end -end support with the help of wide spectrum of uh, deep learning models, which can actually make uh, researchers and uh, data scientists to perform their job easily by, you know, the help of uh, ArcGIS API for Python. So now uh, let us move on to the you know uh, next demo with the help of uh, Scikit library. How we can you know count the objects in an image? Uh, what to go? Thank you, Raja. So in this demo, we are trying to count the number of features in a satellite imagery using Scikit image uh, library. So Scikit image library is a powerful image processing library available in Python. And uh, uh, in this example, we are trying to uh, trying to uh, integrate uh, uh, the scientific uh, Python ecosystem with that ArcGIS uh, platform. So for for uh, this demo, we are using uh, uh, Landsat imagery uh, for uh, calculating the number of farms, circular farms, uh, uh, center uh, pivot irrigation and. Uh, Saudi Arabia. For this uh, sample to run, uh, we require some extra libraries to be installed. So uh, for uh, Conda install, so I guess everyone knows uh, uh, how to uh, configure the Conda environment. It comes uh, along with your uh, Python uh, uh, notebooks. So you need to install SciPy, Matplotlib, and uh, Scikit. Uh, image library into your uh, Conda environment. After you you have done that, you need to do certain necessary imports. Then you need to connect to your uh, ArcGIS uh, platform. So here I haven't passed any parameters to it. So uh, by this way, you are able to connect to the ArcGIS community as an anonymous user. So after that, the same way I need to search for my content. So here. So I got a multispectral Landsat imagery. 
So the type of imagery layer I specified over here, I got the result. And after that, I specify the extent, uh, which is uh, which is the area of interest for me. So, so that, that's the result. That's the farms in Saudi Arabia. So now I do some some uh, image processing or raster functions which are available uh, within ArcGIS dot raster dot functions. So I use a stretch function, uh, specifically a percent clip, where I uh, try to identify uh, the healthy vegetation which is available on my satellite imagery. So after applying this stretch function, so this is the output for my uh, for my result. So I save it on my disk, and then I take this output to my Python library. Now the Python libraries like matplotlib and scikit, I can uh, directly apply sci uh, apply uh, scikit image functions on this imagery. So I do a difference of Gaussian method over here. So difference of Gaussian method is identifying is uh, identifying the standard deviation between uh, between difference uh, between two successive images, so that uh, uh, any any two uh, objects can be identified and will be stored in a in a list in a Python list. So. So everything which I have talking about can be done with the help of a blob dog function, which is available with scikit image library. So I have used that over here. I supplied the image. I supplied the minimum standard deviation, maximum standard deviation, threshold function, and the overlap function. Okay. After that, this has been identified. All my blobs into a Python list. So after that, I remove all the duplicates one, and then I uh, identified all those features which has been identified into in my list as a red boundary, and I displayed the result. And after that, I counted the result, and uh, this is how the number of uh, farms detected are 964. So, so this is how you, in very few lines of code, you can you can uh, take an image, you can count the number of features, and it is it, this is the power of ArcGIS platform. So uh, thanks, Varo, uh, for your wonderful demos, mm. uh, ladies and gentlemen. Now we have uh, saw that ArcGIS is supporting end-to-end -end workflows for image processing techniques. Now we'll see, uh, you know, uh, what is the deep learning workflows that you can incorporate with an RGS platform. So the first, you know, uh, it's actually, I'm just summarizing into, you know, uh, three uh, important, you know, the workflow steps, you can say. The first thing that you need to, you know, bring in your, you know, a training data set. Like you can utilize the image analyst in RGS Pro or else you can even use image server on RGS Enterprise. This is just an example. And uh, or else you can bring in your external, uh, you know, labeled data sets as well uh, for executing the deep learning model. And in like in second, uh, you need to train the model. So the first is bringing the, you know, labeled data set. Second, it is just we are going to have an, you know, we are uh, training our model with the help of the uh, inputs of trained data. And then we are uh, finally we are going to have an inferencing tool. So this is just an you know you know crisp summary of uh, how to execute this RGS deep learning workflow. Uh, and then finally, what you can do, you can share it with your colleagues using uh, you know uh, within your organization or outside your organization using uh, any RGS platform. So now uh, we'll show you and uh, you know uh, how you can use a deep learning technique with imagery in RGIS using object direction method. So now uh, here, uh, uh, you know, uh, we have saw about uh, various types of methods where you can execute your, you know, the notebook. The first one which we have saw as like uh, Gaurav has, Mr. Gaurav has demonstrated about uh, how to use RGS notebooks within the RGS Pro environment. Now here, 
we are using RGS notebook server, which is an extension to the RGS enterprise. The interface which you are seeing is nothing but an RGS portal homepage. So a notebook is added as an, you know, uh, as an extension, and it has a separate functional server, which requires the, you know, typical uh, hardware with, along with the GPUs to, you know, compute uh, the scientific calculation. So like in case, uh, this is the uh, first starting point for uh, your RGS notebook homepage wherein uh, you can add your data sets, like here you can search within your content or within your group or outside your organization as well as you can bring in from uh, data sets from RGS Online or from uh, Living Atlas. And then some of the analysis tools, which are also available over there, like we, we have talked about this, the standard WebGIS analysis tools, I mean the web tools over the you know internet or intranet. So like in case of a summary, like uh, join aggregations and summaries, generating summaries and uh, enrichments, and uh, deriving some kind of an hotspots and uh, you know the location analytics and the pattern analysis also that you can use it. So here is like uh, Arcgis Enterprise, which just you know gives you the handy the tools uh, and uh, ready to use. And moreover, okay, now I have my local files like in case of a CSV or something. So I want to you know bring it into my analytics platform. So how, how can I do that using this file system wherein you can go to your home? And then you can directly upload, and you can browse it, and directly upload it into your, you know, your notebook. And then finally, you can share your, uh, you know, the complete model as a notebook itself. You can share it with your, you know, the, uh, your colleagues. And just to give a background of the demo, and just you know, uh, it's like the objective of the demo is like to identify the uh, palm trees, you know, health assessment. Uh, so. Tonga is actually a uh, South Pacific uh, island, uh, which is you know having you know many you know composite islands associated with it. So uh, coconuts and you know palm products are an important commodity in the Tongan economy, and plantations, especially in the town of Kolawai, have more than thousands and thousands of trees in this zone, and inspections and surveys has to be done at least minimum four times an, in a year to just to monitor the health of the trees. So, uh, so to survey these unhealthy trees, there are different solutions that are available. Like in case of a traditional method, it's like a manual inspection and uh, survey by hand, which actually consumes a lot of time, manpower, and it's expensive too. So alternatively, the other solutions like remote sensing and uh, deep learning frameworks are uh, still being used. And uh, remote sensing uh, methods and image processing techniques that we are uh, Actually, we are using it, but now comes the latest technology that is uh, deep learning workflow that we are going to use uh, for this example to identify and uh, predict the unhealthy trees to determine which trees actually need immediate attention or inspection. So for this, we are using an high resolution uh, imagery that is aerial photograph, which is of about uh, nine centimeter resolution. As you can see, the Kolawai Island is showing the beaches, trees, and the settlements. All right, so so many objects are in the images. So first portion of the demo is like to detect and count the trees. So the workflow is simple. So the first we have to use, uh, you know, uh, the training samples manager, which is a part of uh, image analyst extension tool using the training sample manager and to, you know, deduce the, you know, image chips, trained image chips. So let me show you how the trained image chips are, look, uh, you know, uh, it looks like. So when you go to this, you know, the target folder, you can see this like uh, palm trees uh, image chips has been, you know, uh, cut down into a small chunks, and they are being used. And also associated images are being labeled. So that's why we call it as a label plus, you know, image that we call it as a labeled data set. So that is being generated using, you know, the deep learning tool which is available in image analyst as a part of an image analyst extension. So using this export training data for deep learning, uh, we have generated that tool. So let us now, you know, try to visualize the same in notebook. So always to begin with, uh, we need to, uh, you know, uh, uh, import the necessary and uh, dependent libraries that are uh, required for this example. So here in this case, uh, we are using a PyTorch framework uh, to detect the, you know, objects. Okay. So uh, just then next, uh, what I'm doing it after importing the uh, necessary libraries, I'm just you know defining the path for my, you know the image chips which are being exported using 
ArcGIS Pro. So finally, I know uh, here using uh, using a batch command, I'm just displaying the uh, you know the images which have been exported using Pro. And the method here, uh, what I'm going to use within you know uh, the uh, PyTorch framework and the deep learning model, I'm going to use SSD connector. So SSD means it is uh, nothing but a single shot director. Uh, the method which actually detects the objects in an image just by scoring an initial set of uh, you know objects by you know using an uh, bounding box like the polygon that we have used to generate the training data set. And uh, here you can see this uh, training data set that uh, we have digitized it, almost uh, 570 samples that we have digitized it. And now you can see that uh, the class name, which is nothing but uh, you know the name of the class and uh, uh, the name of the object and the class value which is denoted. So using this, uh, you know, the particular class name and value, what we are going to do is that we are going to pulling down into, you know, our uh, SSD model. So it is always best practice whenever you, you need to train your model, as in the second uh, step of the deep learning workflow, uh, you need to use how much, you know, uh, my model needs to be trained. Like the, uh, just by using the LR find method, you have to train your model, and then accordingly you have to uh, train your model. Wherein now you can see, like I'm just using a 20 epoch. Uh, that is, you know, uh, 20 cycles. It is, you know, getting trained by itself. So here we have the user control. But uh, this, uh, the number of epochs is actually varies uh, between, uh, I mean, uh, the project to project basis or the workflow to workflow basis. It actually varies. So finally, uh, after you know the running the model, I have got my results over here. Like uh, this is the input image that we have given, and this is the predicted, you know, the model output, actually. So this is how uh, you can use, as in the second step, you, can, you have to train your model, uh, you know, uh, using this batch process. And uh, you may have a question like, uh, how much time it actually, you know, takes to, you know, train this model? So the question is hypothetical. Uh, it may take, depending upon the number of images that you are passing it. Like, let's say, for example, uh, here I'm just using, uh, you know, very small image so that it just hardly took few minutes to train it. But in case of, uh, like, if you are putting millions and uh, billions of uh, data to it, so it may uh, run a couple of days together to train your model. So uh, for further tuning your parameters, like uh, once that model is uh, created, and uh, you can go to this, you know, this uh, image folder wherein you can get uh, your uh, model definition. That is uh, the extension which ends with .emd file, which has been generated and it has been trained. As you can see, this particular class value and name uh, has been over there, and uh, other associated attributes like the model type, the configuration, or the framework, and so on, so on, many things. So here also you can tune these uh, hyperparameters uh, to get your model uh, to be refined. And uh, finally, the last step is to go for inferencing. So for inferencing, you can use you know your notebook itself, or else uh, we have the facility. Those who are you know uh, uh, beginners. They can uh, try to use this uh, geoprocessing tools within ArcGIS Pro environment. Like in case here, we have almost uh, you know under the image analysis extension, deep learning tool set. We have three tools. One is for uh, uh, pixel classification, then classify objects and direct objects. So here we are uh, going to use the direct object method. So on uh, upon running this tool, uh, you're gonna get this output which has been generated across the you know the imagery that we have provided. So uh, here. As you can see, that this yellow circle represents the palm trees that has been, you know, the directed across the input imagery. So to do that, simply in the training data, if you see, we have got just only supplied 570 samples, but in the uh, imagery, if you see, it, it has directed, you know, more than 11,000 trees. So using such methods, you can expand your analytics workflows in your organization. So the first portion of the demo is that we have completed, and we are moving into the Second portion is about health assessment. So for health assessment, uh, here we are using the method called VARI. That is a visible atmospherically resistant index. And uh, the people from uh, remote sensing background and uh, you know the agriculture background or environmental background, they can understand it uh, this model very well. And uh, there are other well-versed and sophisticated methods are also available. So just please consider and uh, you know refer the respective domain expertise to get advice on which model that you want to use it. So then with the help of ArcGIS Pro, we can reduce this uh, health, you know, the based on the vary. So for that, I'm going to use this raster function tool. So I can calculate the vary index, like in case of, uh, you know, 
the vary index uh, i can uh, calculate it with the help of uh, the buffer i have generated and along with you know the statistical tools to compute you know the mean portion of my vary index with respect to each boundary and uh, let me zoom it to this uh, particular area and now here you can see i have classified this uh, you know the particular uh, uh, the health of a plant into like four categories like uh, so better than the mean value the red color spots typically uh, it just requires uh, immediate attention uh, you know uh, like those are uh, you know in uh, unhealthy state uh, and in a deteriorating state so the higher the value that green color which represents the tree which is healthier and these red color spots those are unhealthy trees which needs the immediate attention so just for clarity and visualization i'm using arcgis operations dashboard for you know quicker understanding the better understanding i just you know uh, after uh, you know uh, creating this data i just published into my arcgis uh, enterprise and here now you can see the you know uh, uh, you know the better visualization of the data like in case of like uh, what is the health percent with respect to you know the each category and how many inputs and let me switch on the layers uh, this is the palm health data let me zoom into this uh, particular area and let us see and uh, uh, as you can see whenever the map extent changes uh, you can see uh, the values are being changed and it's uh, the uh, the respective locations also and it's associated tree number and other information about that uh, particular tree location as you can see uh, i'm just you know getting those information about that uh, particular you know the tree health so that you can accordingly you can mobilize your uh, workforce uh, quickly with respect to you know for uh, in terms of uh, saving your cost and manpower and etc so this is how uh, you can use object direction method in terms of an you know simple language i can put it uh, like using the you know deep learning workflows to identify uh, you know uh, like the object counts and the health of the palm trees so with a similar example and just you know the moving on to the uh, next uh, demo uh, actually this is my favorite example just to showcase about the road surface in investigation so for that i am just using the uh, some of you have posted your questions like can i use without rgs enterprise can i use my you know the deep learning workflow yes the question is uh, the answer to that question is yes so now i am going to use uh, stand alone jupyter notebook so for the doro has represented the notebook inside rgs pro and in the palm tree direction we have saw that uh, this particular notebook has been hosted in uh, rgs enterprise and now we are going to see the third method like the four data scientists they allow to use the jupyter notebook because they allow you know more coding so uh, let me take you to this uh, you know the case background first uh, look at the uh, road cracking uh, all you might have seen such type of a cracks on the road so they are uh, you know caused due to different types of factors like uh, in terms of uh, overaging or uh, natural disasters and other climatic conditions and they require different types of repairs too so for an in, instance uh, uh, look at the you know uh, right side the alligator tracking which are caused due to nothing but it's due to overloading of the vehicles and or maybe due to poor uh, the right side the alligator tracking which are caused due to overloading or it may be due to poor construction and uh, as you know that uh, you know the transportation authorities like several organizations like uh, civic bodies or uh, the road transport departments they need to figure out where these cracks are exactly located and they need to prioritize for repair so traditionally these are manual processes which are recorded in the paper formats as you know that which is now but it is evolved using which are uh, you know being replaced using latest sensors and the sophisticated technologies which are highly accurate and but this case which is out of reach for many organizations and which is expensive too and now let us see how deep learning can solve the problem with an inexpensive way sitting at the office that how we can you know you know uh, clear up this uh, problem to do that we have used training data sets as i have mentioned that like we either you can create your own training data sets like in this case we have used our uh, you know the imagery tools uh, and then using a training sample manager this is for if you don't have any training samples you can create it so but here in this demo here we are going to bring in already trained data sets you know which has been you know published from ieee big data cup challenge conference so we have used rgs api for python to bring this data inside this notebook and where we can train this object model to find you know these types of a cracks and classify them so as usual procedure 
you know uh, just to get start with that uh, we have to import the necessary you know the library uh, where we can train the object direction model so now we are uh, you know uh, we are going to visualize this you know the training data set so before that you need to define your the data path where it is exactly located and then let me show you uh, you know the data how does it looks like uh, before uh, training and here you can see uh, there are you know the so many images more than 10000 images are uh, you know available in my you know the trained uh, uh, data set and uh, you need to prepare the data and then you know uh, just visualizing before going for uh, training my model using the batch command and uh, finally i'm going to use uh, the same uh, single shot director so which can direct using the bounding boxes and uh, as usual uh, which is recommended to find the learning rate like how your model needs to be trained so as i have mentioned that with respect to each project and each workflow each case study your learning rate will differ so accordingly you have to take your uh, you know the outputs using uh, uh, lr find method and then you train your model as i have mentioned that uh, for this particular case uh, my you know training data sets was uh, running i just defined 20 epochs the same 20 epochs only i have defined the 20 cycles but it took more than you know 8 hours to 10 hours in my case just to you know uh, uh, get you the outputs so finally uh, i'm going to you know uh, see those after training as you can see the ground truth are nothing but the input that what you have provided using that uh, ieee open data set and finally the model what it has been predicted in the right side image and if you want you can save your model and final step as you know that it is uh, going to we are going to uh, you know execute the inference so here in this case i'm not going to use rgs pro tools so here i'm going to use the you know the jupyter notebook itself so uh, <clears throat> Uh, here in this case uh, you know once you train your model uh, we can you know not only just use the images but also uh, it can be applied over the video feeds as well so i'm just showing you the raw video uh, which has been you know uh, recorded just using an inexpensive smartphone that is fitted on the motorcycle and this is the video which you are seeing it is uh, nothing but uh, before the you know uh, application of your uh, deep learning model over your uh, raw data and using this ssc uh, predict uh, you know method i can deduce this you know the cracks over there as you can see uh, you know uh, the bounding boxes are you know uh, patching on top of this uh, road cracks so as you can see this uh, vehicle is moving and uh, we can see the road tracks which are being predicted using a model and updating and finally i'm just you know so what i'm doing once this you know the results are being predicted i'm just pushing into my you know the system of record i mean uh, i'm just passing into my sql databases and i'm just publishing it as a service so using the uh, as a feature service or a map service uh, that you can expose it into your the gs environment and here you can see the associated the latitude longitude values are being Uh, you know uh, which are into my database so now i have got my latitude longitude values so i have published my services and i am just now i am going to display it on the map so uh, a great way of you know uh, seeing the cracks and visualizing uh, visualizing this kind of results or things that for taking action is nothing but i love to use rgs dashboard because rgs dashboards it just uh, not only help me to visualize these cracks but also it can assist you in plotting data driven charts at the right side if you can see longitudinal cracks and lateral and uh, alligator cracks uh, without just uh, you know no coding just to design this uh, dashboard and not only that but when i click any feature so what exactly the models are you know and how does it looks like and other attributes also being plotted over in this dashboard so the, just for the time sake i am just using my you know uh, the video feed and at the as dashboards as you can see now it can help this you know the civic authorities now they can you know uh, quickly infer the final information and uh, now as you can see that you can automate the road surface investigations using uh, deep learning techniques in order to make uh, you know uh, such kind of a policy decisions uh, quickly accurately efficiently and most important in an inexpensive way so uh, so that's how you know uh, you can use this uh, deep learning model as a standard on notebook uh, you know server without going into the rgs pro environment or gs environment
and uh, just to summarize like uh, what are the special data science you know uh, the tools which are available in various platforms like in case just to summarize it uh, the arcgis pro the desktop product so there are uh, many capabilities like geo processing tools and uh, you know the r tools for sophisticated statistical analysis that is also being supported over there so uh, here you can uh, call those uh, r libraries into notebook and then you can play on your data and then deep learning tools also which is uh, you know uh, packaged into rgs uh, so i mean the facility is available but you can externally you can download whatever the libraries that is available uh, you know uh, required for your projects and then uh, that can be managed using uh, the quanta environment that's a, uh, the, a popular uh, python library management uh, you know the window and uh, the rgs enterprise the next thing which you know supports for uh, scalability solutions wherein the multiple people they would like to you know interact together uh, like in case of uh, you know bigger organizations they'll have a uh, uh, data scientist you know uh, five or more people they would like to use uh, in a in a centralized uh, managed environment so that in the case they can rely on uh, agis enterprise based notebook uh, server so within that yes they can call those you know additional federated servers like in case geo analytics tools also can be called and raster analytics also can be called so that you, for that you require a separate licensing uh, roles and uh, in rgs online also currently it is being you know released uh, i think in the last week i guess uh, earlier it was in beta state in rgs online also without this like one who does go for you know task task model uh, you know uh, the software environment they can rely on rgs online platform and uh, yes without you know uh, any uh, you know the ga software yes one can use rgs api for python or one who loves to you know the core uh, data science people they can uh, use this uh, standalone jupyter notebook and uh, finally yes like uh, some of the examples and i have got some questions over there and uh, we are happy to answer that like uh, uh, some people they were asking like what are the use cases that i can uh, use this deep learning and uh, notebooks together like here are some of the examples for here uh like uh, to identify the damage structure of the building and building footprints uh, using instance segmentation model and the land cover using a, a pixel classification method and uh, directing objects using uh, you know uh, the object direction methods and etc so finally uh, you know we are at the end of our uh, uh, you know the presentation and uh, Uh, we recommend you know uh, every one of us to you know join the geonet community of esri uh, where actually we can get into your queries on day to day work and also you can get the global experts they can put in their views also and for uh, any business aspects yes please uh, get into touch with our uh, you know uh, marketing team info@esri.in you can ping us and uh, uh, i always say to my friends yes uh, technology disrupts overnight so keep always uh, learning and please join our upcoming with uh, webinars like in same case you can uh, you know use this link the geovision webinars and you can attend it you can register and you can attend it